this video, we're going to look at how you set up a custom action in Flutterflow and send a remote procedure call to Superbase. Okay, so uh, I had a comment on a video recently where somebody asked me to show how to actually create a custom action and to use the code that we um, that we make available in the description down below normally. And it occurred to me I'd never actually run through this as an independent video. I think it's in some of the others in different areas, but I've never done it as a standalone standalone thing. So I'm just going to run through that very quickly. It shouldn't take long, and it's uh, fortunately not currently too difficult. So what I'm going to do is just do a custom action for a standard remote procedure call uh, because that is my most common use case. So basically, I've set up a new page here, test page. So basically, what we need is an object to call the action from. So if we just go into the editor and let's drag in a row into the column and just a simple button and just to make it look a bit better we'll just align that to the center. So we've got a button there. Let's change the text on the button to action. Okay so this is the button of which we are going to call the custom action from. And what the person asked was um, basically how to use the code as a beginner you know it's something that maybe you, you're not 100% sure of so the first thing we need to do is over here we have got custom code and they're the ones I've currently got in this demo project that I've got set up and what we're going to do we are going to create new custom code we need some code to add to it so I'm going to just copy and paste one of these others so Let's go for the OpenAI key one. In fact, no, what we'll go, we'll go for one where we can add get credits. There we go. So this is one which is on a project I'm working on where a user you can do something with OpenAI and they have to spend credits to do so basically. So I'm going to use this one because we've got an input parameter rather than just a input and an exp uh, output parameter. So let's just copy that a second. So if you've copied the code from the website on the link normally and then and you're not quite sure what to do with it, you come into here and you go add action and you've got a new custom action. And you need to give your custom action a name and we'll call it new credits it doesn't matter what that name is it because it doesn't that's entirely up to you we'll paste that code in there and that is that'll be new credits basically so that your action name you created and the one you're creating and the name in the, in the code that needs to match now this is the return type in the uh, in the triangular brackets there so the the return value sorry is an integer and when we save this is going to say that it is the action type doesn't match I'll, and I'll just explain why when I do it because that's what to do with the question mark and then we need an input parameter so we are adding in a type string which is a user and we ask what we're passing into our remote procedure call. So our type, our name for it is user and the type is a string. So now when we save this, we're going to get a message saying our parameters don't match. So if you notice our nullable tick box is not activated. So if we just save that and click yes and that then ticks because what it's done is matched that's what the question mark means it's matched that the return value is actually a nullable nullable value so that's all you need to do in the code editor here and then you've got your action saved so if we go back into our to our button we'll go on to the super base section just in a second and we'll don't show what to do with the get credits rpc uh, custom code so if we go back to our action button and then you click on the actions tab and we'll do it in the action flow editor because it's easier to see and then you need to add an action and then you go custom actions and we want 
our custom action we've created which is called new credits and what it's telling us is asking us to pass in the parameter that we're going to send as our input so in this instance we'll just add it as the authenticated user id it could be the email it could be anything you could, you could take that value from anywhere basically if you had like a text widget or something you can take it from there any any value you can you can add into there pretty much we're going to pass user id freeze and then you have to give the action output a variable name and that will be we'll call it amount credits and that will just tell us how many credits the particular user has left in this example and then that's how you create a custom action it really is that simple and especially if you're copying and pasting the code as long as you're making sure that your input parameters and types are matching what's in the code so come back to that custom action in a second so as long as you're matching that name of this and the type is the same as what is in the code that you've copied and you've got your names correct and that you had don't change anything on the super base end so it all works there as well you don't really have to do anything else it's actually pretty simple if you've got one obviously that you can ready to use if you've got to change it a bit it's obviously you can do that and it's not massively difficult to do this in this simple form so if we go back to custom action and then all I'm gonna say here is is that let's go and add a uh, another row and we will put a text object in there we'll center that and then we'll split the column up a little bit there we go and then what I'm, all this is for is we have got our output variable name we've called it amount of credit so whatever our the return value is of our RPC call from the custom action is going to be stored in the amount credits there so and we'll just we'll have default variable because otherwise you uh, otherwise you do get the null error when it loads so basically what we're doing there we're calling the action and then whatever the return value is that's what would be displayed in the text box so that's how you do it on the flutter flow end so let's go over to superbase and find that same bit of code and show what happens there okay so you've been on to the link down below and you've on one of the videos and you've copied some code that you want to use and you want to use it in superbase so if you remember we were calling the get credits function from flutterflow and we're passing in p underscore user which was the uuid the authenticated users user id so you've copied this code here from the uh, from the link and then when you come to superbase you come to sql editor and you have a new query you end up with a blank editor and all you need to do is paste the code into the SQL edit the blank SQL editor and click run and that will run the function assuming there's no errors now if there are let me know because obviously I tend to try to check everything that goes up but if something that I've literally given you to copy and paste and it's giving you an error let me know what it is and I'll fix it um, but obviously if you've altered it and whatnot you may have to work out where you've gone wrong but once you click run that will create or replace the function get credits and then that function is then stored in your database in functions and it will be called get credits and it's there the input parameter is user ID the return is an integer and the code for it is there now if you was to change for instance that's the editor if you were to change for instance the name or type of that the input value you'd have to delete and um, recreate the function because it can't overwrite input you can't overwrite the input parameters of a function I think there's a few other things you can't overwrite as well but mainly those so um, 
All you have to do on this end is copy and paste the code, click run, and that should interact with your Superbase tables on the assumption that what we're doing here, we're, we're getting the credits amount passing into a ver into a variable from the users table for a given user. That's what we're doing. So we need to make sure that these values, the obviously the credit count we're declaring at the top, so that's not one that really need to worry about. But the credits, that's column in my table. The public user table, you might call yours, for instance, public profiles, the public user table. It could be whatever your user table is called, and whatever value you're selecting out of that column needs to match. And you may not call user ID, you may call them ID, for instance, for your UUID. So you just need to make sure that your column and table values are what you're using, not what I've used, because you will get an error in that case, obviously, because it won't found them. So assuming you've done that bit correctly and you've matched your values for your column and table, that will just work. You have to click run and then you don't have to worry about it anymore because it will just return the value from Superbase back to Flutterflow. So just to recap, you'll click the action button and in this instance, in this example, the amount of credits will display in the text because you have passed the user ID into the get credits function within Superbase. So that's our input argument and we're calling it PUser in, we're just saying that PUser in our Superbase function is our user parameter that we're passing in and that's it so that's how you create a custom action hopefully that answers the question that i was asked um, i think it does uh, if anybody else got any queries like that they do want me to run through something that they're not quite sure of just let me know and if that was useful please consider like subscribe and i'll speak to you in the next video